Hello guys, I would like to welcome you to this week's Sunday School lesson. In this week's lesson, the pastor will share with you this week's powerful Sunday School lesson review. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you would like to donate to our new Bethel Baptist Church Ministries, you can donate any amount to P.O. Box 18661, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and zip code 39404. Also, cash app capabilities in the descriptions, and don't forget the pastor's Sunday school lesson notes are below as well. God bless you guys and enjoy the lesson. Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for February the 18th 2024 is faith in times of trouble and our bible scriptures today are taken uh, printed text is taken from daniel the sixth chapter verses 10 and 11 verses 14 verse 16 verse 19 through 23 and verse 26 and 27 and we're still in this quarterly theme of faith that pleases god and our, our unit of study for this month is the righteous live by faith. The righteous, they live by faith. And that's what we will find Daniel to be in our lesson today. Last week, we went through the account where the, the three friends of Daniel that came over with him from there in Judah to Babylon in, five, in 605 B.C., it, that came over with him, these, those guys were put into the fiery furnace. And their, the, their faith was, was tried there as they went through the, the furnace experience, even though they let the king know that there was no way that they would submit to him and bow before his, his, his statue. But, but still, and now Daniel himself, we're under a different regime now. There's a different kingship. The golden head that was on the statue of that, that, that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream is now out of the way. That ended in the last chapter, in the fifth chapter, just before our, our printed text, our, our, our lesson starts today in the sixth chapter. In that chapter where Belshazzar, who was the grandson of King Nebuchadnezzar, was on the, on the throne. And he had decided to do something that his grandfather didn't even try to do. Even though Nebuchadnezzar had taken the artifacts and the things from the, the Jerusalem temple, of the, from the temple of God, he never used those things that were, that were sacred before God, that were holy and hollowed out, and that had been consecrated to God. He never used them to do things that were outside of God's will. He just stored those things. But this man, Belshazzar, his grandson, he decided that he was going to use those things that, that, that God had, had, had built there for the temple, made it for the temple service, for, that were hollowed out, that were consecrated, that were set, set apart for the service of God. Even during the days of wilderness wandering, those artifacts, those things, those cups, those lampstands, those things, they were never used to go drink a beer and to, to set up lights so you could have a party at night. They, these things were never used for anything other than worshiping God. But now this man decided to use these things for that and had a drunken party. And in the midst of that drunken party, he saw a hand that came and began to write up on the wall. And when it wrote on the wall, the interpretation of that was that tekel tekel you farson, that you have been found way in the balance and you came up lacking at our, uh, uh, wanting or lacking. And, and that person was told that, Belshazzar was told that he would be destroyed. That very night he died and the Persian kingship, uh, the Persian came into the, the, the power, the world power at that time. Not, not this time the head that was gold. Now it is the arms and, and the chest area, which are the, the, the silver. The silver, they, they are the, the arms and, and, and the chest area. Remember, we told you about the statue last week, the, the head of, of, of gold, the arms and the chest of silver, the torso of, of bronze or brass, then the legs of iron, and then the feet of clad of, go, of, of, of clay and iron. So now we, we, we see the, the, the going down a step 
to the silver area where, where the, the arms and, and, and are stretched out. The kingdom is a little bit different. Under the ruleship of Nebuchadnezzar, if he had signed a decree, he was the, the total monarchy. He could just change his mind and the decree would be cast out. But now you have a different system. Even though there was a supreme ruler, he could not even change his own rules because they were under a different type of system here as the Mede and Persians. The Medo-Persian Empire, as, as Darius here, is on, on the throne. And on this throne, we, we saw Daniel as we started out this, this, this particular section in the scripture and in, in our lessons, Daniel was the one that wrote this book. He was a person that moved up through the ranks, he and his, his friends, and after he had interpreted dreams, he just continued to move up and got higher. And now another regime has started and he still gets moved up higher in, in that, re that regime even to the second in command, the person we saw in second in command that was a Jew over, uh, over a great nation uh, that, wa that wasn't their own nation was Joseph, the, the son of Jacob, back in the, in the days of uh, when, when the Egyptians were the world power. But now we're looking at this and, and now the world power has, ta has, ta has changed. Now the silver arms have, have taken over. Different type of government. And the first verse of this sixth chapter, which we're going to read through this. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three, three, over these three presidents or governors, of whom Daniel was first. He was first. He was lifted up. And, and there's a colon. That the princes might give an account unto them, and the king should have no damage. The, the king was going to be protected. His interest was going to be protected, is, is what Billy talked about there, because taxes would continue to come in and, and the kingdom would be still provided with the financial uh, support that it needed to thrive. So that, that's what's going on there. Daniel is in this, and he's first. He's number one in, in, in this, uh, uh, in the presidents or the governors or these these administrators that would be over those 20, 20 princes or, or high office officers of these different provinces. And then verse three says, and then, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. There was an excellent spirit in, in Daniel. Now it's tempting to, to use some type of worldly or a secular explanation for the excellent spirit that was in him. Just this great desire to work and wanted to be. But this man had the spirit of the Lord living in and around him at this time. Now, we know that the spirit of the Lord didn't indwell at that time, but it did support people that were in service for the Lord. When you were in service and working on the Lord's program, that excellent spirit that was in him it would come to him at certain times and be a part of his life and and at this time, it would help him to even perform better than others. And the king sought to set him over the whole realm, wanted to set him over the whole nation. And, and only the king would be higher than him in that. Then the presidents, or the governors, or that, the group that Daniel was in, uh, uh, and the princes, these that wanted now are going to be fighting against Daniel, leaving him out of this, this particular situation right here, sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could not find, they, they could find none occasion or fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. This, this seems like it goes back, goes to up uh, with us into the gospel message there in the 19th chapter of the gospel according to St. John, when they brought this itinerant teacher in his sandals and, and, and dressed up and brought him before Pilate who was the procurator at that time. And, and when they brought him before him, they wanted to judge him. They wanted him to be killed. And Pilate said, you go judge him by your own laws because I find no fault in him. They could not find any fault in this man, Daniel. They couldn't find anything to charge him on. They wanted to take him down because here he is. He's, he, he's one of those people from over there and he's moved up over all of us. And we are original Babylonians or, 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 or persons. 
Persians or Medes at this time, and, and that guy from over there, way way over there in, in the West, there in Judah, he has come here and, and risen to number two in the kingdom, so to speak. And we can't find any fault in him. Then said these men, we should not find any occasion against Daniel, this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. If his law, the law of his God, conflicts with the law of the Medes and the Persians, then there we would find our answer. There we would find our foolproof plan to try to get rid of him is what was on their mind at this time. Then these presidents and princes assembled themselves together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever, or long live the king is what we, what we often know things to be like that. that these, these guys, the presidents are the governors, which is, which, uh, which Daniel was a part of, but he was left out of this particular situation because he was the one they were trying to, to take down. And so all the presidents or the governors of the kingdom, the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of the king, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. This is one. This is their plan because they know that this man petitions God all the time. He supplicates before God all the time. He talks to God all the time. His God, the God that Daniel serves. So they they knew that this would be the plan to try to take him take him down. Now, O King, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which alter not. Therefore, King Darius signed the writing of the decree. This decree, this official order, this command, this edict it, it issued by a king or a person in good authority, it, it could not be altered or changed in the, in the laws of the Mede and Persians. They, they had to keep it. Remember, we said that this was not the head that had sole authority over everything. This was the arms. Even though there was a king that was the, the big guy on the hill, there was still a different type of government than that golden head that was sitting on the top of the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Now we see that, that the, these guys say that it can't be altered, and that was what they were planning to use against uh, Daniel, Daniel himself. So now, when Daniel knew, this, this is our printed text, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his window being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Did, uh, aforetime, as he did before aforetime, is what is what... I, I start with on this verse, but even though it's the end, the now starts it out, which tells you that all the other things had to come in before it got to this point, because that's why we're needing to go through this in, in the first place. But the aforetime, this was his natural routine to go out and pray. And what, let me tell you something. The devil knows your natural routine, your worship routine, how you go and worship God, when you go and worship God. And as I tell the church sometimes, if he knows that two drops of rain is going to stop you from coming and congregating and worshiping God together as a unit on Sunday, if he knows that rain will stop you, it may not be raining at nobody's house but yours. It, the devil knows your routine and he just wants to hurt the routine. He wants to get you out of the practice of serving and worshiping a true and mighty God. And these guys were playing de the devil's advocates at this time. They wanted to trip up Daniel and they knew the only way to trip him up was something concerning his spirituality with the God that he served. And that's where they went at him at. So, it, it, But this was a natural routine for him to go and pray it, three times a day. They knew the time that he would go pray. The devil knows the time that you, you're going to go pray. If it's your common practice, if it's something you do by routine, he knows the time. He knows the date that you do it. He knows everything about it. He, he, he just, he's just not omnipotent. He doesn't know everything, but he does track your, your, your movement. He does, he can look at, at your, uh, omniscience. He's, he's not, he, he can't, he doesn't know everything, but he does track your movement. Now, when Daniel knew 
that the writing was signed, the decree, this, 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 this document, this official order was signed. When he knew it was signed, he didn't change his practice. Now, I don't think he was trying to slap anybody in the face. It's just, this is my normal routine. This is what I do. I do this because of my God and my relationship with my God. So when this, this happened, he, first of all, he went into his house. He went to his house at the time of prayer that he normally goes to his house at three times a day. So this was a time that he went to his house. He went to that same window that he always goes to, faces toward the west, back at home where Solomon was told, when you pray toward this temple, even though the temple had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar there in 586 BC, still he would uh, look toward that direction to pray. He, the window being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He knelt. The second thing he did was he knelt down. He, he had his own prayer and posture position. He had his, play, his, 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 his favorite posture, his play, favorite position for praying, which was on his knees. That is a good posture, posture for praying if you bow down on your knees. But if you have bad knees, the Lord does accept prayer when someone is walking alone. Jesus didn't get down on his knees as he was walking up to the tomb of Lazarus to tell him to come forth. He was walking along there and he was probably talking and speaking to his father as he walked alone. But he knelt down in the Garden of Gethsemane. So, so this man, he went to his house at the hour of prayer and he got in his favorite prayer posture and he, he knelt down before the Lord as he did every day, three times a day at certain times of the day that the enemy knew that he did it at these certain times of the day are those people that wanted to take him down, the, uh, uh, which was the other two governors or presidents and the, and the other princes or the other uh, official leaders that were over the different provinces. They knew the time that he did this. But then the third thing there is he prayed and gave thanks before his God. Now in prayer, there, there are certain elements in prayer that, that continuously happen in, in a person that, that, that truly worships God. Prayer is a, is a form of worship. God inhabits the praises of his people. When we pray, we're giving praise to God. That's communication with God. So the first thing that happens in prayer is a fellowship that is open between man and God. And this man had a good fellowship with God. And in the prayer of fellowship, there is adoration. God, I know you are my father. You are high and lifted up. Only you are holy, God. He would, uh, adored God. So that was adoration. But, but the scripture here says, as Daniel wrote this, that was also thanksgiving in his prayer. He gave thanks. Now, we know that the other element is going to be in this prayer also because the next verse tells us that. But up until this point, there is the fellowship, the adoration, and the thanksgiving. And there was some serious petitioning in this prayer. We know that because the next verse tells us that these men... Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. They found Daniel praying. They knew that this was a foolproof plan. They knew that this would work. Who was here? There was the other two presidents or the other two governors that were that were set to be over the princes or or to take uh, be over them to give an account. So they would give an account to them. So they bring back to the king. So the king uh, business wouldn't be hurt. So they, they knew this was a fool. This guy is going to do this. We know he's going to do it. So we're going to catch him in this because there is no way it, because he is so faithful to his God will take him down by his faith because he's so committed to his God. Boy, if somebody takes you down because you're so committed to God, how you think God is going to respond to that? My Bible teaches me, and yours does too, if it's, it's, if it's a, a, a true Bible, it teaches you that when Stephen was being stoned, he didn't react or respond to the stones hitting him. The Bible said that he saw heaven open up and he said, I see the son of God standing on his right side. So he, it, it, the stones wasn't affecting him, even though he was martyred in that, he was killed in that. The Lord was right there with him, just taking him on in, just bringing him on in as they were working real hard to try to get his body to die, his earthen tabernacle to be taken down. So, so th th this guy, the, 
these men, they, they were assembled there. They found Daniel praying just as he always does. They knew what time of day. It didn't tell us which time of day it was, but they knew three times a day that this man would be praying and we could catch him at one of them he, uh, or all of them. He was praying. Daniel was praying and making supplication before his God. He was petitioning God at this time. Maybe in the other prayers, he maybe may not have petitioned God much, but this time, he would petition. These guys knew that he would petition because they had put a reason on him to petition God, to supplicate before God, to ask God of something. To supplicate to, means to supply. God supplied the, the rescue, the deliverance in this. That's what the supplication would be in this because this man heard the decree knew that it had been signed by the king, knew that it couldn't be altered, knew that it couldn't be changed, but yet he still went to that window, faced the west toward Jerusalem and knelt down and began to talk to his God. He had fellowship, adorated, and thanked God even in the midst of knowing what the consequences was in all things, as the Apostle Paul said, give thanks. He gave thanks to God, not knowing the end results of where this was going to take him. So these men, they, they, they had assembled together. These, these two other presidents and, and the princes assembled themselves together. Now they wanted to figure out a way to take him down. And so they taking him down with his faithfulness to his God, to the one true and living God. And then verse, verse 12 would say, then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or, uh, or man within 30 days, save thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said unto the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. We, we're, we're looking at this guy, and he's, he's just going there, and he's praying to his God. Look, look at him. Then the king, when he heard these words, look at the response of the king in this. He didn't do what Adam did in the Garden of Eden, nor what Eve did. He didn't try to pass the book and say that somebody else made this mistake. Somebody else caused me to make this mistake. This man said here in verse 14, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. He was displeased with himself. He knew that he was the one that made this decision. He was the one that signed the decree. Now, they had a different type of government than Nebuchadnezzar, but still, once the decree was signed, then it couldn't be changed. Before it was signed, he didn't have to make any, any decision on that at all. So he, he was so displeased, not with someone else. He was so displeased with himself. It seems to us that he would just be so displeased with these guys that it caused him to make this type of decision right now. He may have been a little displeased with them. We'll find out later on that he'll he'll check that situation. But, but still, at this time, he realized who made the ultimate decision at this time. So he was so displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. He, he, he set his, 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 his heart, his heart, his heart to try to get Daniel rescued from this situation. To find a loophole in the law of the Medes and the Persians so that he can bring him out some type of way so he wouldn't have to be destroyed or, or killed or ruined right there in front of them, be thrown into the, the den of lions. He, he, he labored. The, the, the scripture says labored here, which means he toiled. He worked with this thing, trying to find another way to get this man out of this because he said, I did this. I did this. This is because of me. I'm the one that signed that. I'm the one that gave them permission and, and that I signed it. So I'm the one that has to find a way out or find a way to stop this situation. But he ran into a brick wall. He tried to no avail. He, he, didn't, he didn't find a way. He labored until the going down, uh, uh, to the going down of the sun to deliver Daniel. Then verse 15 says, then these men, assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. You, once, once you said it, king, that's it. 
That's that's the law. That's it, it, it's on it's on paper. It's signed. It can't be changed. Now we're under the two arms. It's not that one head that Nebuchadnezzar had. Not that total monarchy. It's it's not like that anymore. Now we are under a different type of governmental system here at at this time. And then the king, verse sixteen says in our printed text, commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Now, this doesn't sound, this is not a question. There's not a question mark at the end of this. Many have looked at this scripture and said there's no way that this king could have had that type of faith in, in this God like that. But how many people have trusted in the true and mighty God that may have been from the secular world, from the pagan world? How many ha have done that? The Bible teaches us that there was a, a centurion that came before Jesus there in the in the eighth chapter of the gospel according to St. Matthew and said, I have a servant at home is, it is, that is sick and he is near dying and, I, 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 and I'm, I'm coming to you on his behalf to see if you will heal him. And Jesus said, well, let's go. And he said, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, I'm a centurion. I'm over a hundred men and I know if I tell them to go there, they're going to go. I know that if I tell them to come here, they're going to come. He says, I know if you just speak the word that my servant will be healed. Jesus said, I have not seen such faith in all Israel. Now, this was a pagan man. This wasn't a man that was of the Jewish nation. He wasn't one of those that, that called themselves the ch the, a child of God or, or by any sense of the word at that time. But he did have faith and know what the God of heaven could do. So he knew that if Jesus spoke the word, his servant would be healed. Well, even there in the Old Testament, it was there during the days of, of of Joshua, when the spies went in to the check out the land there in Jericho, when they when they got there, there was a lady that lived in 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 the walls of Jericho that was trying to help them, and she was uh, and her name was was Rahab. That was something that stirred in these people and 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 kind of kept them in check. And when she was trying to help them, there was one thing that she wanted from them, and that was the saving of her family. Why did she want this? Because she knew that the walls were going to come tumbling down. Whatever their God said was going to happen, they knew that. People knew that. They understood that. Even people from the pagan world. There, verse, verse 9 of the second chapter of Joshua says, And she said unto them, I know that the Lord, which has given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all, nation, all the inhabitants of the land fainted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt and what he did to the kings of the Amorites and that were on the other side of the Jordan, Shion and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, colon, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. People know your God, your God. This king knew about God. Even though he wasn't the one in power in the, in the previous years, now he comes here and, and he's standing before this 80 to 90 year old man that everyone else says, once you're 80 and 90, you should be put out to pastor. This man, he wants to put over his kingdom, but uh, over the whole kingdom at, at 80, uh, between 80 and 85, more than likely years old. He wants to put over his whole kingdom because he realized that, that the hoary head, the, the gray head, there is a lot of wisdom in there. None of the children of Jacob would have came to him when he got a little bit older and said, look, dad, this it's time for you to stop being the patriarch. We're just going to stop listening to you. That, that's, that's not how that goes. There's wisdom that comes with, with, the, with the age itself. So now the, these, these guys, this, the, how, how do they, Daniel, he, 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 the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him uh, into the den. Now the king spake and said uh, unto Daniel, thou God whom thou servest will deliver thee. Where our point is, this man wasn't asking a question. Your God, you serve him continuously. You serve him. You worship him. You give him praise and adoration. He will deliver you. We've heard about your God. 
We know things about your God from history. We know things about your God from who was in power of this kingdom prior to us coming into the power of this kingdom. We know how, Daniel, you have even been interpreting dreams. We know about the fiery furnace experience. We know about these things. So there's no doubting in us about your God. He will deliver you. He didn't ask the question. He wasn't asking the question. They cast Daniel into the lion's den. They didn't have to try to get him halfway in there or in the middle, in the midst as it happened as they were putting the three Hebrew boys into the fiery furnace. But still, they just needed to get them into the den, into that, that den. We don't know how many lions were in the den. We, we see the cute little pictures and there's just three. But there, there was a den of lions. It, it, it could have been uh, many, 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 many lions in there. But he, he, uh, here... He says, your God, he will deliver. He will deliver you. This is one of those experiences where look at the, the situation. There is a den of lions over there. Daniel's looking at it. And when we look at our situation, the trying of our faith, because this is the same situation as last week's lesson, their faith is being tried. Where was the safest place on earth during the fiery furnace experience? It was right there in the midst of the fire where the, the fourth person looked like the son of God. Here, Daniel is going into a den of lions that have real teeth in their heads that can chew you up and break bones. We, we know that for a fact because they will do that. But still, the, that would be the safest place in the world for Daniel because he was in the hands of, of a true and almighty God. So the verse, verse, 15, verse 17 says, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose might be not, but might not be changed concerning Daniel. We can't alter this. We, 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 we continuously say that. Then the king went to, the, went to his palace. This is the king's state before these things happened. Pilate had a state before the things would happen to Jesus. When he told them, do you go judge Jesus by your own laws? Because I don't find any fault in the man. He, he, he had a hard time because his wife came to him and said, you better leave that man Jesus alone. So it's not, a, it's not an easy night when you're doing something that's totally against God's people. So then the king went into his palace and passed, passed the night fasting. He went to his palace and he decided, I, I'm not eating. They, they brought in that 16 ounce prime rib. He said, take it back. I, I'm not hungry. I can't eat tonight. I can't eat while my friend, the second in command, I wanted this man to be second in command. While uh, this 80 something year old man, I wanted him second in command. And now he's down in the, in the midst of, of lions in the den. I, I don't want anything to eat. Then there's the code that said, neither were there instruments of music brought before him. He, I don't want you to entertain me either. Don't bring any, any music in. Don't play the movie tonight. That, oh, no, no movies at that time. No, don't, don't do that tonight. But uh, no music. Nothing, nothing to entertain me tonight. And it says also after the other colon that his sleep went from him. He couldn't sleep that night. This was a restless night. He's thinking about Daniel, this man that, that, that has been so instrumental in his kingdom that he wanted to set as, as second in command. This man is down there in the midst of lions. But if he'd only really understood that Daniel was in the safest place in the world at that time because the angel of the Lord was with him. Verse, verse 19 says, then the king arose, not sleeping all night, but eyes up. I, I, son coming through, he arose early in the morning and went in haste until the den of lions. He got up after fasting all night, after not sleeping all night and, and, and shut down the entertainment for the night. And, and now he gets up early in the morning and quickly makes his way to the den of lions. Make haste. I can find out, find times and, and look back in my life when I made haste to something, when I got in a hurry about something, I would fit, forget some things. Halfway down the road in, in, in the car or the truck and, and realize I left my wallet back at home. This man didn't care what he left. He was headed to the lion's den, may have left one of his flip flaps, but he was headed to the lion's den. He wanted to check on his friend Daniel. And he gets there and verse 20 says, and when he came unto the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, colon, and the king spake 
and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lion? Now he does ask a question. He wants to hear Daniel's voice. But one thing you don't do when you know someone is totally dead is try to talk to him. This man felt like Daniel probably is still alive. He, he cried he cried with a mournful voice and, and regrettable he, because he had already acknowledged the fact that this, uh, in his heart, he had already acknowledged the fact that he was the one that did this. He was sore displeased with himself, it said there in verse 14, because he was the one that signed this decree. So he was the one that, that lamented over this situation. He was the one that couldn't eat the night before, didn't want any entertainment, couldn't sleep the night before. So he's he's coming here with a, with a crying type voice and, and he cries out and he shouts, oh, Daniel. He didn't just say Daniel. He said, oh, Daniel. He said, you are the servant of the living God. You are the servant of the living God. There's no doubt in my mind. You, the servant of the living is thy God, whom thou servest, not partly, not sometimes, not just a Sunday saint, not just a Wednesday saint, but you are a continuous saint. You are, you are continuously before your God, continuously in his face, continuously giving him praise, adoration, fellowship, thanksgiving, and supplicating before him. That God that you continuously serve, he inhabits the praises of his people. You're always praising him and communication with God is giving him praise. You, you are before him continuously. Is he able to serve you or, 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 or able to deliver you from this, from the lions? Is what he, he asked him here. And it, did he deliver you? Did, did he bring you through this? This God that you faithfully and always serve, did, did he deliver you? Did he bring you out? Did he rescue you? Verse 21 says, Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. Or the common statement of speaking to the king, long live the king. He, he, he said, long live the king he, here at this time and letting the king know that I'm here. I'm present. I'm, I'm awake. There's nothing wrong with me. As a teacher would call the roll on, 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 in the morning when the children get to school and, and say their name and they say present here or, or what up teacher, whatever they said. It, it, he says here, long live the king, letting the king know that I'm, I'm fine. I'm here. And then he lets the king know why I'm here. He said, my God, Verse 22, has sent his angel and has shut the mouth, the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. Colon, for as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. I hadn't tried to hurt you either. I had I've done nothing but what you needed me to do to try to promote your kingdom. And, and, and in me, the Lord has sent his angel. My God, that personal pronoun, he said, my God, this is my God. My God sent his angel to, 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 to shut the, the lion's mouth. There's nothing wrong with me. The lion couldn't even open his mouth. He couldn't, he couldn't rumble the way that he used to. And I, I told you, it, this, it, it's a reason that a lion is the king of the jungle. It's a reason nothing in the jungle would challenge, challenge the lion because I, I would go into places where lions are and when they're laying down in their sleep, and even the sleeping will rumble the ground sometimes when they, when when they're just breathing and and so when they when they roar things would get out the way because their bark can be definitely worse than their bite and, and so here at this time this the, the lion's mouth was shut i don't even know if they were able to rumble that night even in in the inside of themselves that they could not hurt me, Daniel said. They couldn't open their mouth, so they definitely couldn't hurt me, couldn't bite me. They couldn't just bump up against me and hurt me. So, so that, that's what happened. For as much as before him, innocency. I, I was found pure. That's what purity is, is, is what innocency is there in the Aramaic. That's how this, this book was written in the Aramaic. It, it, it's, it, it's saying that he was pure. He was innocent of wrongdoing. He was righteous before his God. He didn't do anything wrong. But not only was he innocent and righteous before God, but before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. I hadn't done you any wrong either. And you know that. He, he, and that's what he could have said in this. I've done you no wrong, and God knows that in this situation I've done no wrong. He's not saying that he's never sinned in his life because he'd, he'd allude to that later on. But still, I can't find any fault in him. 
I couldn't find that in Joseph. Some of these guys just kind of kind of intimidate me a little bit because well, every time I look in the mirror, it seems like I need a little bit more grace. And, but but these guys, we, we, you, you can't hardly find anything on them at all. He said, I hadn't hurt, done you any hurt either, king. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. He was overjoyed about this circumstance and this situation at this time. The king was. To, to hear this man's voice, to do the roll call where there was only one person in the classroom, a classroom of lions, and, and, and this man is perfectly fine. And he commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den, reach in there and get him out of there. So Daniel was taken up out of the, 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 den, the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Remember last week, the three Hebrew boys, when they came out of the fiery furnace, when Nebuchadnezzar said, come out of there, they found that they didn't even smell like fire. Nothing on them was burned. The shoes were still together. Didn't, the rubber didn't come loose. Everything was just fine. So, and the, even the turban was still on. So, so nothing, nothing was wrong with them. And there was nothing wrong with Daniel here at this time. No manner of hurt was found upon him. Why? The end of verse 23 says, because he believed in God. He believed in God. He, the faith had, had, had delivered him, that brought him through this. His faith was totally in God. The Hebrew writer said in the 11th chapter of, of Hebrews 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Lions' mouths were stopped because of faith in God. We know that to be true because the scripture tells us that. Daniel totally trusted in the Lord. All of his trust. Yes, God could have allowed him to be martyred just as Stephen was. But at this time, God didn't see fit. There was something that else that need, he needed to do and needed to happen. There were many more chapters to be written here. This is chapter 6. He goes through chapter 12. So there were still things that this man needed to do after he was 80 years old and, 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 and he was going to get them done because God had, uh, had assigned them to him because he believed in God. He had his total trust in the God of heaven. Then verse 20, 24 says, and the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel. Now he, he, he knows that he's been tricked. He was the one that he was sort of displeased with, but he knew that he had been tricked and those that had accused Daniel had, you, had did the tricking. And they cast them into the den of lions. Look at what happens. When, sometimes when you do wrong, it can hurt. If you dig a ditch, you might better dig too because you might be in it yourself. Yeah, and that's what these guys found. They, they, they dug the ditch and it, they put them in there, their children, their wives, and the lions had mastery of them. They took them and chomped on them like, like Pac-Man on, on the board game, uh, 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 on the video game. And break all their bones in pieces or ever they came at the bottom of the den. This den was more than likely a pit that was kind of under the ground. So now they're, they're broke up down there inside of that, that den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. This sounds like something the Apostle Paul would say. Grace be multiplied to you. But, but here he said, peace be multiplied unto you. Then he said this in verse 26. I make a decree. Now I'm making a statement. Now I'm making a decree. That now I'm, I'm, I'm giving this, this order, these, the, these orders, that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, colon, for he is the living God, and steadfast forever, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end of the, the even unto the end. Now he says, I derive that right, right in this this decree, that everyone in my kingdom is to tremble with respect before the God of Daniel. Because he is the living God, the first thing. He is the only true and living God. We have our gods that are made of stone, made of metal, and made, made of wood. And they, they are right there in front of us, but they're not living, they're not breathing. They can't help us at all. He said that, that God of Daniel is a true and living God. He is a living God. The second thing he said about him, that, that he is steadfast forever. Meaning that he, in the Aramaic, meaning that he is permanent. 
It means he's, he's right there. He's sure he's going to be there forever in that position that he's in. He's permanent. And then the third thing about him, his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. His kingdom won't be, that won't be a ruin to his kingdom. It can't be destroyed. It can't be taken down because he has it protected even within himself because of who he is. And, and it, it, it can't be destroyed or brought to ruin. And the fourth thing he says, and his dominion shall be even to the end. His rule, his eternal, his rule is eternal, is what, what uh, Daniel is saying there, what, what the king is saying there as he's talking about the God of Daniel. This is the king talking at this time. He said he delivers the, the, the sixth thing in the next verse, the, the fifth thing in the next verse. He delivers, meaning that he, 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 he frees a person. He opens, he, he, when he closed the mouth of the lion, Daniel was free from any hurt or destruction himself. He, he frees uh, or... And then he rescues, he, uh, or he extricates, uh, or frees, uh, uh, constrains the difficult times. It keep those things from hurting that person. So, and he works uh, sign, signs and wonders in heaven and earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lion? He he he's, he works these things. In other words, he performs them. All of these things are written in Aramaic, so they're, they're a little bit different than you just reading it in, in, the, in the Hebrew. He has delivered Daniel from the power of the lion. The lion has power. He, when he comes down with his mouth, he, he can chew up and break the bones, and, and that's what he says. He's been delivered from that power. He's been rescued from the power of the, of the lion. In verse 28, so this Daniel prospered, in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus, the Persian. This man, he kept his trust totally in the Lord in his time of greatest trouble, just as we should. The safest place in the world is to be wherever the Lord is in any given situation. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we do pray that you'll help us to know and understand that the trying of our faith Work it patience, but let patience have its perfect work so that we will be entire, wanting or lacking nothing. Father, we do pray that you'll just strengthen us, Lord, as we read and go through these lessons and let them build up on our faith, Lord, in you and trust you more and more as, as our God, my God, as, as, as Daniel would say. Father, we do thank you and we pray that you will search our hearts, forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.